my name is Tom Sayer and I'm here with John Gong to ask him a few questions for his gig in Brighton at Sticky Mics tonight. So, John, firstly, the uh, banjo case that you've got on your guitar, I've, uh -huh. never, see, I've never seen this done before. Where, right. where did you first see it done? Um, I first saw it, uh, there's a guitarist who does it called Adrian Blake, who's a um, really fantastic finger, finger picker. Uh, and, um, it's actually an old banjo thing though, so it, those, those uh, yeah. pegs are from uh, banjo and it's a, a trick invented by Earl Scruggs, who's a bluegrass banjo player who kind of famed in the 1950s. And uh, yeah, they're really, really fun the little tricks to use. And you can kind of use them for little country type noises, or you can do ethereal, you know, like synthesizer pitch bend things with them. So yeah, they're awesome. And I read in a previous interview you use very high gauge strings, obviously because they're very percussive because of the thickness. Does it not really hurt your fingers? Did you have to practice a lot? Fingers sort of build up I have pads like a fork yeah. on the end of my fingers <laughs> from playing for so many years. Um, so um, I, I use the strings actually for the sound. So um, if you use really thick strings on, on a guitar or any strung instrument, and that means you can tune it lower. Yeah. And you get more bass and more warp and all of that good stuff, yeah. rather than all the all the twangy noise that yeah. people usually associate with acoustic guitar, which I don't really like. No. I like all the mid range and the warmth and yeah, all the overtones. Yeah, that's where the soul lives. The soul doesn't live in the treble of the uh, sort of uh, You've obviously got a very wide range of influences. Could you pinpoint three of your main influences and how they've sort of really influenced your music? Yeah, I can. So. Um, it's, it's really, really hard to narrow it down, I've been asked this before, so I, what I generally do is try and pinpoint three kind of guitar singer guys who um, I'm really into that maybe not everybody has heard of, so um, Michael Hedges is one really important influence, and he's an American guitar player, he was kind of at the peak of his success in the late 80s, and, um, uh, kind of Californian hippie guy, new age stuff, um, really the most incredible revolutionary guitar player you've ever, like, ever heard or known about. Yeah. Um, and uh, there's a British singer songwriter called Nick Harper who um, is still around uh, gigging lots. And he's an absolutely incredible guitar player, incredible singer, breathtaking songwriter. And he's a massive, massive yeah. influence. Yeah. 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 And, uh, yeah, so yeah, the third one kind of fluctuates depending on what day it is when I was asked. But um, there's some that are more well known that I'm really influenced by, like Jeff Black, who's really had a big influence on me, for sure. Well, I only mean, actually first heard it when I was 10 years ago, which for me is one reason. It takes me a long time to get into things. So yeah, Jeff Black is a big influence in the way that he kind of. It's funny, I think a lot of people who are singer-songwriters listen to him and think, oh, it's really weird, he's a singer-songwriter, but it's all crazy. Because my background is really broad and also there's lots of prog that I listen to and, and blues and R&B and like, I mean, like 60s, 70s R&B and that kind of stuff. It's like, oh, he's a singer-songwriter, but he's doing prog. No, he's, doing, he's, like, he's clearly into Zeppelin, he's yeah. clearly into, you know, whatever. So it's, um, yeah, he made a lot, as soon as I heard it, it was like, almost like this is the guy I always wanted to hear. Yeah. It's tipped. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, really. Well. Uh, you studied jazz when you were at Leeds. How has this sort of had an influence on your music? Because a lot of it doesn't sort of seem to have a very clear jazz influence. Mm, it's funny, jazz is uh, not really a genre though. Jazz is a mindset. Yeah. And it, jazz is to do with trying to push boundaries yeah. in whatever way that is, with your instrument or with music in general or whatever, drug use. <laughs> I don't know. But um, yeah, jazz is really a, just a way, of, a way of approaching music. So um, yeah, there's actually a lot of jazz in what they do. Also, there's harmonies that I use that are really, really jazz. A particular era of jazz that I really <laughs> into is modal. Yeah, so it's like Mars Davis um, from like the fifties, I guess yeah. that era, late fifties, uh, and yeah, um, so it is in there, maybe tucked away a little bit. Yeah, yeah, but I'm definitely not a jazz guitar player. No, <laughs> or certainly not a normal one. Uh, in 
terms of the arrangements that you've done, so you did the arrangement of Ain't Nobody, yeah. how, how do you sort of piece that together? Because obviously you've got like the melody and you've got the chords and what would like a normal person would cover the song, but then you add in all the percussive things and everything, how does it all sort of come together in your head? Um, so, it's, it's really complicated, but there's key things that, you, that I want to get. So you, you need to get the melody, obviously. With that song, I really wanted to get the bass line from the original song. And then you kind of fit in whatever else you can physically manage to fit in. Yeah. But it's a lot easier to do that if you don't limit yourself to kind of thinking, okay, this is how you play the guitar. So if you think, okay, you can do this, and be over here, be yeah. doing notes with this hand, another <laughs> notes with this hand. Yeah. And then it's, um, it's a lot less limiting, because it doesn't matter if the, if the melody goes this way, and the bass line goes this way. If you're using two, if you're using, trying to do it with one hand in a regular way, you couldn't do it. Yeah. With two hands, go wherever it takes you. So, um, yeah, that's that's really the approach. And then there's there's one bit in the middle of the song where it has this middle eight section. And I thought I've been quite I've been quite kind of careful and um, truthful to the original arrangement of the song, but this bit I'm just going to do whatever I want. So it's kind of just yeah. the middle eight bit. I've done my own thing and I've put my own. Spin on it, so I think that's good. I think it's important to sort of put a bit of your own stuff. You can on, or so or not, but I just, I just wanted to. I think I was kind of sick of doing it exactly how it was. Yeah. I felt feeling a bit restrained by it. Just yeah. Decided that's to the jazz in you trying to break. Yeah, maybe. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe. So uh, you had a masterclass which was up in London yesterday. Yeah. What, what sort of things do you actually cover in your masterclasses? Really, everything to do with. Kind of guitar playing and my approach to music that's really what I want to get across um, is my approach to, to making music and, and trying to be um, creative and trying to break down boundaries but literally explaining exactly how I do that I'm not just yeah. saying oh it's great to be creative and original but actually explaining how you literally can be original how you can take what you know what you know how to do in music and use that to do something that is truly unique and original and that's what I'm trying to do because I've been to loads of workshops and master classes especially when I was younger um, quite often you get shown some technique or some detailed thing and you can then kind of go away and try, try and use yeah. but then people will use quite vague statements about how it's really important to it's really important not to let the technique be ahead of the music you know? people will say that they're actually telling you what that means yeah. how you do it so I actually explain how I do that. And, yeah, I don't let the technique kind of override the music when I try not to. So yeah, I explain that. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. So you want to know? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, at which point did you make the conscious decision to not have a label and to do everything independently? And what do you think the pros and cons of that decision have been over your career so far? Um, it's. Uh, it's I don't know, I, I feel like it's harder work um, because you're doing a lot of stuff yourself that normally you might have somebody else doing. It, so it's harder work, um, but also it's completely it means that I'm free to do whatever I want. So uh, that's amazing. So for example, there's a guy here at the venue tonight who has been in touch with uh, my manager actually about um, me going to play in Beirut. Okay, and. It's very unlikely that I'm going to go to Beirut for one concert and it's going to make lots of money. Okay. Really, probably not going to do that. Um, but because I'm not beholden to the decisions of a management company or a record label, I can go and do it anyway. And also, it means that actually maybe I'm, I'm more likely to be able to uh, make money out of the gig or make sure I don't lose too much money going there. Um, because there's things that I can do to maximise the revenue that a record label wouldn't be able to have the freedom to let, let you do. Yeah. Um, so, because I can just be creative and come up with other ways. So it means I can go off and do a gig in Beirut just because I really, really want to do that. And nobody's saying, yeah, but how's this going to help your profile? Yeah. Well, it's not. <laughs> it's so going to help my profile in Beirut. Yeah. <laughs> you know? But, um, you know, it's, uh, yeah, so I, I just want to do it, so I can just go and do it, and that's what I do, really. That's what I'm doing right now, I just, I just wanted to do some, a few little gigs in the UK, because I travel around so much at the moment. Yeah. So I'm going to just send some money, and I'm just going to look at you. That's 
do like 10 gigs in the accounts I haven't played before, so. Here you are. <laughs> yeah. Uh, your last record you funded through crowdsourcing. Yeah. Uh, is that something that you think you'd like to do again? And were you impressed with the response that you got from it? Yeah, I would like to do it again. I said afterwards I didn't want to do it again because it just was really intense amount of work. But now I'd like to do it again and do it better. I want to do it. I want to do a better job of it because you learn how to. I don't know. It's funny how you interact with the, with people um, who buy the record and. and pledge for it to get made. Um, it's really it's really different and I really, really enjoyed it. And I was quite worried worried about it. I do a lot of social networking. I'm very yeah. careful with how I interact with people. I try to be. Um, I have to be really, really careful because I don't have any there's no filter between my brain and my mouth or my fingers when I'm typing, so I have yeah. to be really, really careful. Um, so yeah, but it was it was awesome. But it was a lot of work. I would recommend it to Anybody who's thinking about it, they think that you've got enough. Uh, it's not a way to build a fan base. Fans are always trying to build their fan base. But if you've got an existing base that who might be into doing it, then I would really recommend it to any artist. Really, not even just music. Anybody who's trying to do a creative project, really recommend it because it's just it makes the making of the thing a creative process yeah. as well. Even down to um, you know, actually the design of the packaging or whatever becomes a creative process because you yeah. can ask people what they think and they can say, oh, that sounds like a good idea. You know, you'd be amazed what people care about. Yeah, it's great. And uh, finally, is there any, anybody that's alive at the moment that you'd really like to collaborate with in the near future? I get asked that a lot and uh, I don't really, I'm not very good at collaborating. <laughs> so, um, it's funny, I used to be a lot better, but now I've just been touring so, so much all the time on my own when I get put on stage with somebody else. Um, I do really enjoy it, but I, it tends to be like, oh, we'll do a song together and that's it. I do enjoy it, but it flashes by so quickly because I'm concentrating so much. So, um, I don't know, it, it's fun just to have that stuff happen when it happens. So, no, there isn't really anybody. There, there are, there's people that I'd love to just say that. I mean. That's a different, that's yeah. a different thing. So I don't know. I don't have an answer for that. That's great. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Thanks, John.